Let's talk a little bit about June 6th, 1944, D-Day in Normandy. Today, I have for you First Wave at Omaha by Critical Hit, a company that is often spoken of quite disparag disparagingly among uh, ASL players. I'm not going to get into the specifics of whether Critical Hit is good or bad or produces good or bad content. I'm just going to present you with the contents of First Wave at Omaha and talk about what I see in this first edition um, of their Normandy D-Day invasion module or scenario pack. Um, this is a first edition, I believe, maybe second, but I'm very pretty positive it's a first edition from the research I've done. I bought it secondhand on eBay for a whopping $80, which is actually a very good deal because first editions these days appear to be in the two to three hundred dollar range. And I believe that's because one, the first edition is long out of print. Um, Ray has gone on, as as everyone knows, likes to recycle, reprint things. Um, so this is the first version, and I think what makes it attractive is it comes with all the counters, and the maps are traditional uh, multi-fold maps, not not the panels that you'll see in later Critical Hit videos that I do, but they're traditional maps that fold out. And there's three of them in this case instead of, say, 16 in maybe the reprints. I forget how many there are, but there's a lot of panels. Um, the new versions don't have the counters. You have to buy the counters separately. And there are some variant counters in this in this uh, scenario, this module. Um, and the maps, again, are quite different. Now, conversely, the new maps um, on the newer versions actually look better. They're much more colorful. They're more vibrant. They look really good. They just come on a bunch of panels you have to put together. Like I said, you'll see that in a video I do of a later edition of um, the uh, Omaha East and Omaha West. Um, this is just uh, Omaha West, but it's called First Wave at Omaha um, and the new versions, if you order order the current versions off of criticalhit.com, they're, as far as I recall, they're very expensive. So if, getting this for 80 bucks, I thought it was a steal, to be honest. Completely unpunched. It's basically new. The bag looks a little wor uh, worse for wear, but uh, it's basically new. So let me, let me open this up, <clears throat> and we'll start digging through the contents. Um... Actually, before I'll open it up and put it out. But before we jump into the contents, I want to talk a little bit about D-Day. Um, and you can use the timestamps below to jump directly to going through the content here. Or you can listen to my little D-Day mini history lesson. Um, but I think you'll find it of interest because I talk about um, the map um, in this module. Because the map... The map is really, really good, uh, in my opinion. Uh, Critical Hit does really good maps. This one is, from my analysis, is very accurate to history. And I'll show you what that looks like here um, when I pop up some, some of those graphics. So let's take a look at what the uh, D-Day map looked like. Sort of a historical map from back in the day. Um, and I show that here. And you can see... Um, this module, Omaha East, or First Wave at Omaha, which discovers East, covers only the section to the left of this uh, invasion map that I show here. Kind of uh, easy green and west. So easy green, dog red, dog white, dog green, and Charlie. That's what's contained in the uh, First Wave at Omaha module that I'm showing here. And you can see um, on this map there are... Um, if you can see the red cross-hatched areas, those are all the strong points, um, German strong points along the beaches. And you can see the natural egress from the beaches are these draws. 
And then Omaha East, there are basically three of them. Or two of them, I'm sorry. There's the uh, Vierville draw and the Le Moulin draw, I believe you pronounce it, <clears throat> kind of in the center. Um, that's be, between the draws, there are steep bluffs. So it's very difficult to get over the bluffs and to get any armor over the bluffs, obviously. So they, the Germans fortified the draws very heavily. Lots of strong points built, built into those. And that's historically reflect, reflected on the map, which I'll show you here in a minute. So the natural thing that the America or the Allies did was to try to actually go over the bluffs in between the draws, which made it even more difficult for them to get off the beaches. The draws are strongly defended, so they tried to go up the bluffs, which made it really difficult for them to do, which delayed their inland push um, into Normandy significantly. They did get the job done eventually, but it was, that's why Omaha Beach was such a, such a uh, thorn in the side um, of the Allies during the invasion, the way it was defended and the way the bluffs um, kind of restricted movement. Uh, another thing to notice on the beach here, there are these uh, little bracketed things with the red cross hatch on them. Those were um, gaps that were created in the obstacles um, along the beach. So there were only three. Um, there was a real wide one kind of near the St. Laurent draw in the center there. And then there are two small ones on either side of the Le Moulin on draw um, to get the majority of units through towards the bluffs or the draws and get inland at that point. Um, so that's just a quick little history of the struggles of the Allies um, coming onto Omaha Beach. Um, Omaha West in this case. Now let me super, but this is the, the picture I'm showing here is the whole uh, Omaha Beach from Charlie on the left or west all the way to Fox Red on the right, which would be the east end of Omaha Beach. And Omaha Beach is overall it's about 3.6 miles wide and Omaha West represents about two miles roughly um, of the beach. Now let me superimpose do a little switcheroo back and forth, superimposing the critical hit um, Omaha map, beach map, and inland map over this historical invasion type map of the first wave landings. And I'll switch back and forth to sh kind of show you how accurately the critical hit map mimics the historical terrain. So I'll do that now. Um, and you can see the bluffs line up really well, the beach lines up really well, even though there are rules for varying um, surf coming in, depending on what time units are arriving onto the beach. Um, the draws line up really well. The roads are even really close. So I read that they made several trips to Normandy to actually plan out the map and go over the terrain. I'm sure they had historical maps, but this kind of shows you the a work, the work that Critical Hit um, put into, I think it was Kurt Martin, primarily, I believe, who did most of the work, um, put into the uh, overall uh, Omaha map, um, ASL map. Um, very accurate, um, lines up well historically. Now, there are some people that will say, well, sometimes historically accurate maps don't make for good games or gaming maps. That may be true, but that should be able to be accounted for in play balance right so if a map favors one side or the other you should be able to try to balance that historical terrain um, with special scenario rules or unit adjustments or what have you um, another thing to note is um, just on the Omaha e or west portion the left portion um, there are I think there are 86 85 or 86 uh, hexes from the left to the right where the Omaha West map ends. And if you do the map on that, that comes out to 10,900, I'm looking at my notes here, 10,958 feet. Um, and if you were to measure a historical map using the map scale, I measured it to be approximately uh, 10,875 feet um, in real units, real feet. 
that's a difference of 83 feet. So they nail the scale right down to what 80 like 83 feet of the home Omaha uh, West map and they mimicked all the terrain features as good as they could using a hex grid pattern I think they did a fantastic job the overall map that's shown here is east and west linked up together um, and there is a massive uh, scenario that does that it links everything together it's a huge monster scenario and I'll get into that later um, but it's actually one of the most impressive maps I have seen in an ASL product. Um, no matter what you say or think about Critical Hit, um, I think it's a fantastic map. Um, I have not yet played on it. Uh, honestly, it's such a huge scenario. If you play the whole scenario, the monster scenario, I'm not sure I'll ever get to it in my lifetime. But it is an impressive map, and I love it, and I appreciate the work that went into it. Okay. Let's, now let's jump into, now that I've got that out of the way, to show you what the overall map looks like and how it compares to historical maps. Let's actually jump into uh, what is in the pack. We have our cover sheet, first edition, like I said, I believe. Um, let me move, just move this to the side and I'll pull stuff over. So we have our uh, first wave at Omaha booklet. It starts out... It is uh, 12 pages long, so it starts out with a two, three pages of uh, two pages of sort of historical background on uh, first wave at uh, Omaha, which is Omaha Beach West, like I said, and um, then it starts getting into the main thing with these special rules is terrain, a lot of terrain and things like naval onboard artillery. Not off-board, but on-board. There are actually ships that come in late in the monster scenario that, that can start fighting or start firing uh, naval on-board artillery at the beaches. So you have things like uh, uh, on-map trenches. Um, there are no, as far as I know, there are no placement of trench counters. The trenches that are actually printed on the map are historically accurate and you use those instead of placing uh, uh, trench counters for the Germans. They're actually printed on the map and I'll show you the, those later. Um, they talk about things like perimeter wire is printed on the map, uh, tide lines and beach and the surf level, uh, tide line level depending on the time um, of the monster scenario in particular different beach obstacles which are printed on the map they're not placed they're actually on the map belgian gates high stakes beam obstacles check hedgehogs seawall rules uh known minefields minefields were already in place and the allies pretty much knew where they were and they were marked um they are marked on the map printed anti-tank ditches um that's another thing that made going up the draws difficult there were um anti-tank walls and anti-tank ditches um, near the beaches right in front of all the draws. That's another reason why a lot of uh, the invading forces tried to go up the, bluff, up the bluffs. Um, we have Bangalore torpedoes um, counter, uh, Bangalore heroes. Um, then we have uh, defending the Atlantic wall. So this was, this section was like attacking or breaching the Atlantic Wall, and then defend the, Atlant the Atlantic Wall. There's a bunch of special counters in here, like Tobruk, uh, Panzerstellung, blockhouses, tunnels between them, uh, pillbox cupolas, uh, place guns, restricted pillbox covered arcs, uh, kettle weapon pits, um, and then there are, section four is Omaha watercraft. There's a bunch of different watercraft. There are uh, onboard naval direct fire that I spoke about, which can come into play. And that's where a large section of the rules are. That's a good page or two of onboard naval direct fire. Um, onboard rockets are, are in this bunch of duplex drive uh, AFVs on the U.S. or sorry, the uh, Allied side. Bulldozers, which already exist, but they're also in play here. And then there are some special rules for this scenario. Uh, Black Day for the one 
116 scenario. Um, that's actually those are the actual uh, formations that um, did the uh, Omaha West portion of the invasion. The majority of them are from the 116th, but there are special rules on that monster campaign game. Advanced climbing rules, obviously for cliffs and bluffs. Um, more naval off board, on board artillery and pillbox covered arc information. Uh, oh, here are the designers here. Yeah, design the primary designer was Kurt Mart, Kurt Martin, Pedro Ramos, and uh, Ray Tapio. And I think this, yeah, 2009. I didn't mention that this came out. This first edition came out in 2009. And then uh, on the back here, there's basically some charts for uh, special terrain, obstacles, and what have you. Okay. Let's go through the <clears throat> scenarios real quick. There are 16 scenarios. There are 15 that are traditional ASL scenarios that take place on some portion of the Omaha West map. In this case, it's up here in the upper northwest uh, corner. And they're fairly small traditional type scenarios, right? So plan to buying the farm. Those are pretty short scenarios, five, six turns. Ace, eight turns, it's a bigger one. Uh, looks like uh, maybe that's a fight around Veerville. Yeah, Veerville, which is in the lower left corner of the Oma West map. It's kind of a little village that down there. Trapped like rats, probably getting off the beach. Oh, getting uh, some armor off the beach, it looks like. Texas T. Both short scenarios, five turns. Sergeants lead the way. And again, I can't make any comment on the the play quality of any of this stuff because I have not played it. I'm only looking at the quality of the contents, um, the, the counters, the maps, how much is contained in here. Uh, off the beach, both of those look like uh, you, just small parts of the... Uh, Omaha West Invasion, trying to get off the beach if you don't want to play the monster scenario. Lesson one, uh, frontal at St. Laurent. A brutal task. And these have all been reprinted. Like I said, I don't know if, what, if any, updates have been done to these scenarios. I have not made a comparison. Uh, Three-story house. Rocket man, this one must have uh, onboard rocket artillery. Yeah, right there. Some German onboard rocket artillery. Uh, smashing a breach. No footprints. Blood in the water. Looks like trying to take this draw. I forget which draw that was. That was the Le Moulin draw, I believe. Oh, yeah, it's right there. Lay Milan. Okay, that's the, uh, yeah, that's scenario 15. So here's scenario 16, which is the monster scenario. Black day for the 116. Um, this has, I don't know, about 15 scenario cards to it. Um, it takes place on the whole Omaha west map now there is an omaha east module that also has a monster scenario and as i showed you omaha east map is basically right here and you could link those two scenarios up into a monster omaha beach invasion campaign um, and i'll go over that in a later video when i um, open up omaha east but for this one, it's 39 turns. And um, the first scenario cards are just for Allied forces. So it shows landing crafts, units that are contained in them, or random units. There is a table where you roll. If there's question marks, you roll on a table to see what kind of leader or what type of squad is in a particular landing craft. And then it'll say where they enter, like this this first uh, company F enter using seaborne assault on turn two at dog red and or easy green on between these hexes. 
So there's a lot of uh, seaborne assault in here. Here's some more. There's basically wave after wave of landing craft coming in during this monster scenario. I'm not, not going to go into all of these in detail, but you can see lots of landing craft. Here are the tables you roll on for your random units. More landing craft. In this case, landing craft, large landing crafts carrying uh, Shermans and dozers trying to get on the beach on dirt, turn two. Landing craft for days. I'm not sure if the counter sheets has all of these landing crafts or you have to supplement them with your own i have not done the math on that as of yet more landing craft and allied units american units and even more they just keep coming wave after wave um, and here is your naval onboard direct fire so uh, Endron turn 32 along the west. Endron, this is just U.S. destroyer McCook and U.S. destroyer Karmic. Endron turn 35, and it tells you historically on each of these sheets. It kind of tells you historically what happened, when they came on, and where they came on, and why. You know, like with the landing obviously in jeopardy around 8:30, oh, 8:30 hours. USS McCook moved in dangerously close to provide more fire support for troops. So it kind of gives you each uh, formation that's coming on board uh, onto the map, under the beaches. It tells you why and kind of what happened um, during that time. So it's kind of interesting. I think that's it for the allies, for the Americans. And then we get into the, uh, the German order of battle. And a lot of these German order of battle are fixed at uh, these strong points, which are historical strong points, which are mainly centered or located, like I said, overlooking the draws uh, on Omaha Beach. They're, the draws are highly, highly fortified to keep uh, invading units from coming up those instead of coming up the more difficult bluffs. So a lot of these will say they're located in specific hexes, right? Um, within the... WN 65 strong point perimeter. If you look at the map, there'll be a perimeter line that defines that. They have to set up in these specific hexes or set up in any hex of that strong points perimeter. And that applies to all the German units. They're pretty much fixed in their, where their defense starts at least. They can obviously move after the game, uh, the game turns. But as you see, the map is very large. You're not going to be moving you know, a unit from one strong point on one side of the map all the way to the other. You're going to be moving locally to position more tactically than strategically across the overall uh, Omaha West map. Uh, and then there's some local reinforcements that come in uh, on after turn 10 as well. Then finally, there, there was at uh, strong point 74 i can't remember which side of the map that was on whether it was on the west or east side of omaha omaha west map but these were historically placed uh, guns of various kinds and they don't you don't put a counter on the board apparently you you just you can just fire them um let's see they're yeah they're level plus three with a starting range of 20 hexes so they can't be targeted you can't fire back at them the americans can't you basically just you can fire them at units that they can see and you just mark them on this card if they fire or not prep fire or defensive fire so it's kind of an interesting concept there uh then at the end here we've got the uh the uh information sheets for the different uh, destroyers that can come on um for support uh during later dates of the uh, game turns of the ca large campaign game and the special rules for these are in that pamphlet that i showed you it looks pretty pretty epic and i would really like to play it sometime but you need a big table and you need a lot of time to play it uh, let's get into the counters here so we've got some pretty boring informational counters always wonder if this uh turns out good when I zoom in. I've been having focusing problems with my camera lately. 
Yeah. And then we get into the actual uh, American uh, and fortifications kind of special units. There's some 557 um, assault engineers in here. These special covered arc bunkers and pillboxes, some onboard rockets, German rockets, and a lot of American uh, either landing crafts or duplex drive tank M4s or infantry support weapons, Bangalore torpedoes, tetral charges for blowing holes in the wire and obstacles and whatnot. Now the uh, I have I only have I've only bought one critical hit uh, counter set um, and these these even though these these are old the punching on the or the die cut on these are way better than the the one set that I've purchased over the years the corners on the the set that I purchased they're punched very far away these like these have really nice corners so if we were to punch them out and trim them they would clean up really well. The later punching that uh, Critical Hit does, I'm not impressed with. It looks more like this, um, which seems to be an outlier. If you can see this corner here, there's a huge nub that's going to be hanging off of that. But most of the corners are nice and clean. These would punch out really nice and clean up well. So for those of you who love to uh, natter about with your counters, these would be very good. If you can find a copy of uh, the first edition, with, which includes the counters. Um, this is, this is just, uh, I think it's just, a uh, double. Yeah, this is just, uh, there's two sheets. These are basically the same sheet here. Same thing. Double, double up on those. Uh, just, this is all, oops, got two there. This is all infantry. Actually, I think this is double too. It's doubled up infantry, uh, American and Germans. It's a leaders. I think there were some Bangalore heroes on here. Maybe it was the other sheet. It must have been the other sheet. And then the last one just has some more American units and some more fortifications and some German vehicles and guns. Climbing. Sniper activation. Oh, a ship. That's uh looks like a British color. Maybe that was... Yeah, HMS uh, Talibant, Lieutenant Colonel Trevor, British. So we get a close up of that ship there. The counters are generally uh, actually pretty nice, to be honest. Yeah, multicolored, looks like good die cutting, good printing. Um, then lastly, before I jump into a flyover of the map, I'm just going to show you the, so the maps come in three, three fold out sections. These are old traditional type printing. So they're very matte, no glare on these, but the drawback is the color is pretty muted. And you'll see that when I do the flyover video of, uh, the Omaha West beach. Um, but they're reasonably sized. The reprints, the, there are two versions of the reprints. There's a larger uh, hex size, and then there's a monster set, which I don't know how big those hexes are. I do not, do not ever consider buying any monster scenario pack from a uh, critical hit. To play anything, you'll probably need half your house to lay the map out. The hexes are just enormous, and the map ends up being bloated so big that you can't even probably couldn't even reach units in the middle of the map if you had to actually move them so that's what makes this attractive these are traditional hex sizes it lays out on a reasonably sized uh kitchen table if you have a good sized kitchen table you can actually play this on a table as opposed to the more later printings where it would be difficult to actually fit it on a table to play it uh and then lastly it's just the uh you know, the back sheet propaganda, what's contained, you know, historically what it's all about. Um, so that's it for the actual physical product or physical components of the uh, first wave at Omaha pack. Uh, so next, let's go over, I'm going to lay out the map. I'm going to insert a uh, video here 
and we will uh, go over, uh, fly over with my uh, camera of the actual map and zoom in on them, some things and see what it actually looks like. All right, let's do a flyover of Omaha Beach, the uh, west portion of Omaha Beach. Here's a zoom out as far as I can get of the entire map with a uh, pocket rule book size for reference. I measured the map, this first edition map. It is six feet long by three feet wide. Now, any additions beyond the first edition, the map is going to be even larger. Keep that in mind. This fits, actually it fits perfectly on our kitchen table. We have a fairly long kitchen table. Well, I think we have a leaf in it. With a leaf in it, it's very long. But this could be played perfectly on our kitchen table. So here's the details. Let's fly across the beach here. There is the uh, Vereville draw leading into uh, Vereville itself. All the uh, fortifications on the beaches. Here is the, the uh, Le Milan draw. And this would be the side here that connects up with, directly connects up with the uh, Omaha East map, which would run uh, probably into that wall if you hooked it up, maybe just beyond it. Um, playing Omaha East and West on our table, it would not even fit on this table. So you need, even for this more reasonably sized um, map of this version combined, you would need two massive tables um, to pull that off here. Um, but you can see this version of the map. The hexes are normal sized. The printing is matte. There's no, no real glare coming off it. We have a little bit coming in from uh, uh, the window outside there. But uh, yeah, no real glare. Colors are a little muted compared to the reprints that come later. They're much more vivid, but you're trading off a gloss finish um, for this matte finish. Here's some of the uh, historical uh, trenches you might see, historical minefields. And there are, there are, I think, yeah, there are eight levels on this map from this kind of greenish gray color, which is considered zero. I think they call this the promenade. Um, just beyond the seawall here, and it goes all the way up to level eight here um, above the beach. And there are a lot of uh, steep terrain here. So these are the bluffs I was referring to. You go directly from promenade up to level, let's see, two, three, four, five in a matter of uh, three hexes. So these are very steep. Natural invasion route would have been up the draws here um, on Omaha West and over on Omaha East as well. So here's a here's a perimeter line for a strong point WN70. This is upside down. Sorry. Um, this dashed white line is strong point 70. So any units in the order of battle that say set up anywhere within WN70 would have to set up within those white dash line. Otherwise, they would set up in specific hexes, and you can see here lots of uh, trenches, inherent trenches in uh, a lot of the strong points. Here's another one. Lots of inherent trenches. Then you get up uh, off the beaches. Those are all hedgerows, obviously. We have a lot of orchards and small villages, a lot of open ground as well. Uh, with minefields, lots of minefields. I believe the inherent minefields, if I remember from the book booklet, are only two firepower factors, but they they're all over the place on here. And they, these would be the uh, anti-tank ditches that were actually there historically. Again, 
leading into the draws to keep the allies from, uh, here's another draw, kind of bleeds into the neck, Omaha East map over here. Um, tank trenches, anti-tank trenches to keep uh, allies from driving vehicles up the draws, especially most of the draws had roads. That's how you got down to the beach uh, and the promenade down here. Very cool map. Very historically accurate. I don't think there is any inherent wire on the Omaha West map. I think that's all on the uh, Omaha East map. Very steep terrain here. Is that four, five, four crest lines and one hex? That's practically, you might want to just call that a cliff, practically. Um, there are cliffs on, yeah, Omaha East. There are some cliffs. I don't see any here. So you can see this, if you played the monster scenario on this, the 40 turn or 39 turn, whichever, whatever it was, it would take you a fair few hours to pull that off with all the units involved, all the movement, landing, etc. Now combine that with Omaha East, and you could probably devote a good portion of a year to playing this, my guess, or an entire summer if you wanted to spend your entire summer inside playing ASL, which most of us probably would be okay with. All right, let's go back to uh, finishing up the unboxing. Hopefully uh, you enjoyed this map tour of the first edition of First Wave at Omaha. Okay, we're back from the flyover. Hope you guys enjoyed that, and it gave you a good overview of uh, what the uh, maps look like laid out. Um, now, I mentioned earlier that there was there's Omaha East and Omaha West. First wave at Omaha, this early version, is Omaha East. And you can combine Omaha East and West into one ginormous uh, monster scenario. And they have different, uh, slightly different rule sets because different things happened on Omaha East versus uh, Omaha West or slightly different fortifications um, on the East versus West. I think there's perimeter wire in the East, but there isn't in the West, things like that. So the, I think it's the guys at Texas ASL put this together and I'm just going to show you very quickly. Um, John Heiler. Um, this is where I downloaded it. It was Texas uh, ASL, and they talk about Texas team team tournament where they played it and found some of these inconsistencies. So they put together this uh, Omaha East and West rules consolidation. So if you were ever to play both of the huge modules combined into one probably life-stopping monster scenario, they've kind of taken everything and shuffled it together into one... Uh, rule set one rules consolidation and i was just going to show you what that looked like here so they mash things together i think the things in red it's supposed to be red my printer didn't print it very well um are where the rules differ where they kind of jam the pieces together to make one rule set here okay so it's the same it's the same wording that's in the uh pamphlet i showed you and they just combine them all into one, which is kind of handy. Um, they might have tweaked these uh, uh, these cur tur curved, uh, sorry, these covered arc graphics a little bit, and uh, maybe the naval onboard artillery a little bit. That's one of the complaints about Critical Hit. Sometimes the rules aren't quite as complete as they should be. So I think they, the Texas ASL guys or whoever did this, the uh, what was his name again, John Heiler took the time to try to clean things up. So if you were to play the whole thing, yeah, you have this resource. And then there's some flow charts here. 
at the end. Uh, Omaha East West beaching flow chart. Yes. Uh, beach obstacle attack resolutions. Fire attacks versus landing craft flow chart. Continued. Sorry. This is probably going to be not so helpful, but I just want to show you what's in here. Uh, collateral attack versus passengers from a hull hit flow chart. Uh, and then here's the uh, scenario 16, Bloody Omaha, um, which again takes scenario 16 from the Omaha West shown here and Omaha East, which I'll show sometime down the road, jams them together with uh, appropriate victory conditions over here and special scenario rules so that you can uh, play both the scenarios together. That's it. So you can find this file if you ever get the, uh, any, the east and or west um, modules. You can get this on the Texas ASL site. Just search Google for Texas ASL. It should pop up. Um, and that's all I wanted to show you for First Wave at Omaha. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you found it uh, informative. Again, I'm not going to get into the business of uh, bashing or praising Critical Hit. I'm only going to speak to what I have in front of me. And this is probably their most ambitious module they've done. Um, and again, it's 12 years old as far as I know. I believe the map is gorgeous. The map is very well done. I can't speak to the quality of the and balance of the scenarios, but it does look like it's, it is historically researched for, fairly well. I don't expect it's fair. It's that balanced. Um, especially if it's based on historically what happened at, at Normandy, I, I expect the Americans to win most of the time, but there's very little official Normandy, uh, material out there. Um, uh, there is a campaign game coming. I've been hearing that for many, many, many years. <laughs> Hopefully we'll see it one of these decades. Uh, but Critical Hit does have a bunch of Normandy stuff, which I think is fairly popular. And it kind of scratches my itch because Normandy has always been interest to me. So if you can find this for cheap, like I did, 80 bucks on eBay, uh, I think I got lucky, to be honest. Um, you might consider picking it up just to have it as a reference and play through some of the stuff. Um, if not, just for the map alone, which is, which is like I said, I keep going on about the map, but it's one of my favorite maps in any ASL product I own. Even though I've never played a, played on it, I just look at it and I admire the work they put into nailing the ASL map to match uh, the actual historical and the invasion maps. I think they did a fabulous job on that. Anyway, so that's uh, Critical Hits First Wave at Omaha. Um, that's it for this unboxing. I'll see you next time. Rollo.